No long intros. This is the Armin Dangerous editing tutorial and breakdown. Um, Instagram and email if, for music video inquiries and website down below for my editing pack and presets. Uh, this is part one, um, just for After Effects and Premiere users. Part two is just for Vegas Pro users, if you guys still use that, which I know a lot of you do. So that'll be here in like tomorrow or the next day. So yeah, prepare for that. Also, another thing, I tried a new way of recording this. I recorded me making the effect first and then I voiced over it in editing. Tell me if you guys like that or tell me if you guys want me to go back to me explaining it while I make the effect live. All right. To start off with this, I just want to mention that he used a studio space with a bunch of white background. That's uh, just an easy way how he does it and he can pretty much mask out his person just by keying out the, the thing. So that is kind of a lot a part of a lot of the effects so this first effect he pretty much just keyed out the white and then brought down the brightness on him and then put a lightning overlay on him sorry i didn't show that in the video i just forgot about that but let's move on into the main pretty much effect here's a quick example of how you use that white background just to get quick masks i'm just going to go to my effect panel search color key and then put that onto my clip and then on the settings i'm just going to get the uh the point dropper tool and then just click the background and then I'm going to change the tolerance up a little bit just so it gets rid of the background and then change the edge thin to 2 and then that'll get rid of the edges. Um, you can see some of the purple isn't gone so what I did is pretty much duplicate the effect so pretty much put this effect on the same thing and then pen drop or you know um, you know paint drop the other purple and then just change the settings around a bit until i got a pretty good mask this this is how he did it but not a lot of people have green screens not a lot of people have you know blue screens or whatnot so i'm going to show you a different way to do it which just involves roto brushing for this main effect with the him dancing around and him blocks around it you're gonna have to mask him out um like i said before i showed you he used a pretty much a green screen to mask him out so it's kind of easier for him but let's say you don't have that so you're gonna have to do it manually um, and After Effects has a really cool tool called Roto Brushing, and I'll show you how to do that. Here's the clip I'm going to be using, just a simple clip I found in it. So I'm going to go to the top toolbar, and I'm going to select the Roto Brush tool. And then I'm going to double click on the video layer I want, and then I can begin Roto Brushing. It's pretty much just drawing him, or drawing inside of him, pause, uh, as like a person, if that makes sense. So just kind of draw around him. And then I'm just clicking the mouse button and then just drawing him. If you don't want anything or you've messed up and it just like selects the whole thing, you can hold Alt and then select that part. You can see it, then it turns red and it deselects that part. Now, with this, you just kind of want to go, you know, take your time on it and then try to make it perfect. Mine's all pixelated since it kind of goes on contrast. So if you have a, let's say, a white background and someone's wearing a black shirt, it'll work really good on it. But since Cole Bennett made the color correction kind of blue and he's wearing a blue background and the walls in behind her are kind of the same tone color It's having a little bit of trouble and on top of that It's not really a good video because I downloaded off YouTube, so it's all pixelated, but we can f fix all this little crude edges um, Just by taking our time and going through it. So you want to do this through every frame. Um, I just press control Right arrow key and then it'll go to the next frame and I just kind of fix fix it, but at the end I'll show you how to uh, if it's super crude, you can kind of go to get away with it by feathering. In order to see the new roto brush you made, just click on the back on the composition in the top, uh, in the upper corner on top of the video, um, just like that. And then you see how I said before it's kind of crude. I can get kind of like fix it as in not really. Um, I could just make it look better by going to the settings and then just bumping up the feather a ton, and then now it looks ten times better than it did before. A little tip that a lot of I see a lot of people do that don't want to have a clean cut. They just put the ecto effect on it, and then you have a cool outline effect, and you don't really have to do that much work on it if you don't want to, you know, do that. That's just an extra tip. But let's move on. So now that you have your mask, you just cre need to create a solid color background. So right click on where your projects are or where your video files are, create new solid, and then solid color. And then I just created this little blue. And then to put it on top of it, I'm just going to drag that down beneath my layers. You're then going to need to select the pen tool on top, but make, but make sure none of your layers are, are highlighted. This will then create a new shape layer. Um, I just selected a green so you guys can see what I'm doing. And then I'm just going to draw around him, but kind of crudely in a box format, kind of just how the video is. Um, yeah, so once I go around him, 
I'm now gonna put my shape layer underneath the layer I want, but still over the background layer, and then it'll look like this. All we need to do from here is animate it. So go to your shape layer, open it up, and then press the stopwatch for the path one. Um, this will keyframe the path. And then what you can do now is you can start uh, animating it. So I did every two frames, but then at the end, I decided that that's still, it was a little bit too harsh. So I just kind of did every four frames. It's a little trial and error and how you like it. When doing this, I kind of just try to copy his movements and try to just move the shape layer around his body whenever he moved, but still keeping that like boxy look. Like I said before, when I finished this, I realized that I put too many keyframes and it just looked too blocky and it didn't look too nice. So I pretty much recommend only doing it every five frames. That's what I did at the end, meaning that I animated the shape layer and then I moved five frames to the right and then animated the shape layer again. Um, you'll see that here. And then at the end, I changed all the keyframes from linear to bezier meaning that i just held control and it clicked on them and then if you do it right the keyframes would turn from a diamond into a circle and it just gives the shape a more smoother look that's pretty much for this effect it doesn't look exactly like his uh then again i didn't take a lot of time to do this he probably he also added a tint to the person so it gave he gave it it gave Juice World like a blue tone. Um, I'm just messing around here, putting a stroke on it, putting Ecto on it, you know, other things you can do with it. But yeah, let's move on to... This effect is pretty much my Lil Mosi Boof Pack effect, just with some adjustments on it. Um, go to that video, and then I'll have a download link where you can download the overlay for free. And then I'll have... I think I have one where you can download like 40 of them. So I pretty much just opened up the one that looked the most similar to it, which was this one. And then just to show, I'm using the same effect that I did with the outline tool because you're going to have to mask him out. I just think it gives a better look. You don't have to, but to have the effect behind him, like the first one he had, um, mask him out. So I'm just using the same rotor brush I did earlier, if that makes sense. Um, now you're going to want to drag your overlay in between the two clips. I just put it in the timeline directly in between the two clips so I don't have to look for it. Um, then I just changed the position of the overlay by pressing P and then just move it more towards the middle and then I just scaled it up by pressing S and then making it bigger. Now we have all this black so you need to change the mode of the overlay by going to the bottom of your layers and then clicking that toggle switches and button and then I changed it to lighten but then it didn't look really that good so I changed it to screen the mode. And then it looks more of what it looked like. And now it's pretty much the same effect he had in the first one. You just need to add a little glow. Now he added the After Effects glow in it, not Sapphire glow. Um, but I added Sapphire glow just to give it a different look to it. But if you want it to look exactly the same, he added glow, which I'll show later on in the video. Um, so this is the Sapphire glow. It kind of looks, you know, kind of cool. Uh, but yeah. So this effect where it was the same effect, but it's on the floor, it's the same thing, same overlay, but you're just going to need to make it to a 3D layer. So go to the left, and if you guys don't see the like button set, click toggles and switches until the button set comes on. Click on the cube for the overlay layer, and then open it up and then start messing with the X orientation. And then I just, just make it look like it's on the floor, but kind of angle it so you can still see the effect. Don't make it like exactly horizontal where you can't see it and then i'm just you just want to put it underneath your object or whatever you want to do it and then just you know make it look like it's going to the floor so right now we have the effect going with him and you know popping out just like the floor and then like i said earlier this is i'm gonna show you the glow he used it's just the regular after effects glow instead of sapphire glow just put it on there and it gives it looks the exact same so mine's red because just so you guys can see it and then now it's going with the floor at the same angle that he is if that makes sense i guess the next big main effect is this one transition that he did it was kind of like a cut mask transition that you don't really see a lot of you can definitely do it in premiere i usually do it in premiere but i don't want to change programs um because i'm lazy so i'll just show you new in after effects but just apply the same concepts in after effects into premiere and it's super simple so I have myself transitioning from this first clip into this, you know, shoe clip, this next clip. What you want to do is you want to duplicate the first clip and then go to the last frame of the first clip and then right click, time, freeze frame. And then that'll create a freeze frame of that last frame. Now put that frame on top of the second clip, 
because where, that's where you're going to use it. Now, I'm going to go 10 frames into the second clip because I just think that's a magic number. And then I'm going to drag the freeze frame picture onto the second clip and then just make it the length of 10 frames. So going off the first video, the transition was he masked out the background first and then Juice World started getting masked out. So since we went 10 frames, I'm going to go every two frames, meaning that I'm going to make five masks, five different masks every two frames, and then he's going to disappear. So we're going to start masking out the background first. I'm going to go to the very beginning of the uh, still frame, and then I'm going to click the pen drop tool or the pen drawer tool. And then I'm just going to mask out half of the background because that's what he did. And then on his hair, um, I just, you know, I'm doing it fast just for the sake of the tutorial and time length. But when I usually do it, I usually go inside of the person, pause, and then I feather it out a little bit. And then it usually looks way better than going right outside because it leaves a few outlines. So just try to go inside of them more than outside if that makes sense. I forgot to mention when I was making the mask, I started from the top. Make sure you go to the mask settings by clicking your clip and pressing M and then click invert and then that'll take away the mask. That's what the part we want to take away. So after you do your first mask, you're going to want to move to the right two frames and then cut your freeze frame clip. I press shift control D on After Effects um, and then that that way you don't have to remask everything and now you can just reanimate your mask or just remove your mask. Like, as in move your mask again um, and then just get rid of the rest of the background uh, just like he did it in the video. Now you're going to want to do the same thing once you finish that. Move two frames to the right, cut the freeze frame clip, and then start removing him. Now instead of moving all the keyframes down, I just deleted the keyframes and then just kind of kept it a straight line. I just held control and clicked them and then it'll delete it. So it looks more of a straight line and not all jagged and it's just way easier and faster. Now keep in mind, we have three more frames for him to disappear entirely. So just keep that in mind when you're making this mask. You're just gonna wanna keep doing this until he's completely gone. We have two more masks until he's completely gone. So move right to the or to right to the two frames, delete some of the keyframes. And then I this is the last mask and just delete almost all of the keyframes and then at the end, we'll have the same transition. So this final effect is super simple. It's pretty much the VHS effect that you see throughout the whole video. Um, it's pretty much the VHS plugin that I've shown many times, University VHS plugin. And then with the play button overlaid on top of it, you can just Google VHS play button PNG and then just download it and then put it over the VHS plugin and it'll give that effect. It's um, You just have to mess around with the settings to find the exact same setting he used and like whatnot, but that's how he did it. Thanks for watching another breakdown, guys. It's I'm always glad to see people coming back and watching new breakdowns. Tell me if you guys like this type of video where I recorded my screen beforehand and then I talked over it while editing it. Or if you guys want me to go back to where I explained how to do them live and I did them live. Um, yeah, thanks for always liking and watching and stuff. And yeah.